Okay, so in the first step in this uh, script, we will start installing and loading a couple of packages that are required to go through the tutorial. So we start with uh, DevTools and Pacman. Those are basically just some, some helper uh, packages that we will use. Um, so we, we have DevTools now, then we use Pacman. Pacman is used to um, import a bunch of packages at the same time without the need of actually uh, calling for the install packages uh, command before that. So here we have the packlist that uh, combines basically a vector of all the packages that we will use. And using the pload command, we can then basically import the uh, packlist uh, to our, our um, session here. Okay. So the next step then will be the data preparation. So uh, first of all, we will set a home directory, which will be the folder uh, where this script is situated. So uh, in the best case, you have downloaded the script and uh, put in the data set in, in exactly the same folder. So we call the home dir. So we now have home dir, which is in our case under C. In the next step, we will then define the data input. The data input defines our raster data set that uh, includes our parameters for the prediction and also our in situ layer. So uh, in our case, we have used uh, the uh, subset. So we have used the original data set that, that you can download from the website. That is uh, the S1AVHVV1617 data set. And we simply created a um, subset from this data set to make it a bit smaller so that the processing doesn't take as long. So what we would recommend is you could do the same, or you can also use the original data set. But this depends on your resources on your local computer. Okay, then in the, in the next uh, bit here, we will basically uh, clean up our raster data set. So you, we have uh, 76 variables here. And these variables have some uh, yeah, faulty values in them, and we want to clean this. And for this, we basically use um, a for loop that goes through all the variables that we have and looks for a minus 99, which is in our star data set, the no data value. Then we, we uh, use the raster data set and transform it uh, to a data frame. As you can see, uh, this uh, can take a while, but since we create a data set that is smaller than the original one, it won't take as long. Okay, so now we have cleaned our raster data set and now we can transfer it uh, to a data frame. And then afterwards, uh, we can use the remove command, which is actually quite neat if you want to save memory. So we will delete the raster data set from, from our R session. So in the next step, we'll be using the set names command to set the correct names to our data frame. You can see here that we have uh, all the uh, VH and VV variables from our Sentinel data stack and a LIDAR, which is our in situ information. And in addition to that, we have X and Y. This is actually very important because a data frame itself does not contain uh, geographic information. And X and Y stores the, co the coordinates that we later need uh, to transfer our data frame back to a raster file. So we hit OK. And now we have the correct names already. Then we again uh, make um, an omit of, of none values in our data set and remove the old one. So the remove command is something you can do, but it's something that you don't have to do. But if you're, for example, working on a laptop where you have limited resources, we highly recommend to do this. So down here, we also have a suggestion for those who have very limited resources. So you can basically just subset your data frame to make it smaller. In this case, you can use a random stratified sampling approach to use only one tenth of your data, right? So your data set will be even smaller. Then in the next step, we can uh, use the save RDS command. The save RDS command um, is actually quite handy when you want to uh, 
uh, use bigger files and you want to process them in R and go through all these steps that we have done before. And you don't want to do them every time, right? So what you can do is you can now export your result basically. So your data frame can now be um, exported in this uh, RDA format. This is what we will do now so that we can later use it and do not again uh, need to use the set names command. We don't need to omit the non value. So this can actually save a lot of time. Okay. So the next step now of this of the first script will be the task creation. And here we will basically create the first part of our machine learning approach here. So first we will define chords, which uh, contains the X and Y coordinates. So we will um, tell our algorithm, okay, X and Y are those um, parameters that will store the geographic information. All right, so we will set this to null. In the next step, we will now create a regression task. So the task is basically sort of a main function in our um, MLR framework. So uh, here we can define um, what kind of uh, task we want to use, whether we want to have a classification task or regression task. In this case, we will use a regression task. These are the options you can choose from. Uh, here you have to decide um, what is your in situ data. So in this uh, case, it's the ID. Yeah, then we have to um, choose our data set, which is data one in this case, or target, which is LIDAR, and then also provide the uh, right um, info for our coordinates. We just run this, this all goes really fast. And then we start actually creating our random forest uh, model. So in MLR, the first step is to create a learner, which in this case is a regression ranger. So ranger is, is a package in R that um, provides quite fast random forest uh, modeling, and you can also use it to run a regression uh, random forest. So within MLR, you can choose from a large variety of different learners. So if you're interested in this, you can just go to the MLR webpage, and there you can find a long, long list of integrated filter methods. And there you can also see which kind of uh, method is usable for which um, task. So for example, um, some uh, measures might not be usable for classifications, but might be for regression tasks and the other way around. So for example, if we now go down here, uh, we also find our um, ranger, which can be used for regression and also for classification purposes. Switching back to R now, we can now move further and uh, just use this get params um, command, and that shows you all the uh, parameters that this learner has to offer. So then we can actually move one step further and filter these params, so these parameters, uh, based on whether they are tunable or not. So here we can see, for example, the number of trees. Yeah, which is the number of trees that our random forest will consist of in the end, or the mtry. So these two are very uh, yeah, prominent, uh, prominent variables that define the performance uh, of a of random forest. However, there are much more. So you can also decide on the split rule. You can say, um, uh, I want different uh, fractions for the samples. So there is a large variety here. But for now, we will stick only to the number of trees and the MTRI parameter to be tuned. And what is also quite neat here is that you already see the value ranges in which these parameters are. Okay, now moving on with uh, the spatial tuning. The next command we'll be using is the make param set. And here we will actually decide on which parameters we will tune for our modeling. So as I said, we will use the MTRI and number of trees. And in our case, we have um, selected two values for the mtry, so which is one and two. And for the number of trees, we have selected four different values. So this means that our um, algorithm will now try the different combinations between the mtry and the number of trees. Here you could also define a random value range for your parameters. So say if you have no knowledge whatsoever about how your mtry um, needs to be to have um, the best result given your resources, then you could also say, I want a random value range. But you have to take into consideration that this maybe um, has a significant impact on your resources and on your processing capabilities. 
So what we did here is we basically used our experience and just predefined a couple of values. Just as a side note, uh, the mtry uh, parameter is a parameter that in this case can be uh, very strong in terms of how it affects your, your calculations. So please be cautious because a very high mtry can be um, basically the end of your modeling because your model will not find an end. Okay, so we run this and then we go to the control grid. So this control grid is basically, um, yeah, the the main function to do the resampling. And we will use a spatial resampling approach here. So um, that has been discussed already in the um, first dry ecosystems course. So if you want to know about uh, more about the importance of spatial cross validation, you can uh, go back to, to that video. So here we choose the spatial cross validation with five iterations. Again, you can use more if you want, but this will again uh, impact your uh, performance of your local computer. Okay, so in the next block, we have added an option for you that you can use if you want. So uh, it is possible to parallelize. Um, if you are on Linux, you can use the multi-core uh, command. If you're on Windows, you can use the socket mode. So this basically allows you to make use of all your CPUs but this can also alter the stability of your system. In our case, we will not use the parallel function now, but you can uh, feel free to use it. So we will just now uh, run the actual tuning of the random forest model. So this process might take a while, um, but we can uh, go through the parameters um, as it is running. So you can see here that we um, used a couple of parameters within this tune params function. So we have the learner that we defined earlier. We have the task that we created in the very beginning. We have the resampling that is uh, basically um, our parameter, which is the spatial cross-validation. You could also use a non-spatial cross-validation if you're interested in that. And then uh, we have our parameter set that, that we defined up here. So here you could have any other variables that you're interested in, our control grid. Then you can uh, decide whether you want to see this information down here. And then in the end, and this is very important, you can also define a couple of measures. So it's performance measures that basically tell you how good your model is. So if we look down here, we can see that we see an RMSE value. And this is the value that tells us whether our modeling is getting better or if it is getting worse with a different combination of parameters for the tuning. So what we will have in the end is a set of parameters and a minimized RMSE. Okay, the processing has now finished in our case. Uh, you might also experience uh, that this can take quite a while. So um, this is now the final result that we have here. So we can see all the combination of mtry and number of trees in this case. And uh, there's also given the uh, RMSE that we have and uh, the resulting time. So the duration that it took uh, for our computer to process uh, this specific combination. And as a result of this, you also get your optimal uh, parameters for mtry and number of trees, which is in this case 2 and 500. And you also get the RMSE that is the lowest in, in this case. So one consideration that should be uh, in your mind when you look at this is that um, while uh, the last um, combination uh, featured the best result, um, the increase or the best say the decrease in RMSE might be not worth it of actually taking the time, right? So you could say if you have a very, very big data set, uh, this process could potentially take days, you know, or even uh, a couple of hours. And then you have to decide whether you accept that, that your RMSE is 0.2 uh, higher, but your processing time is considerably smaller. So this is a consideration that you have to make for yourself and that you have to take based on the resources that you have. So once this uh, has finished, we will now um, finish this first script by um, exporting our uh, tune RF files. So we will um, actually export it again using the save RDS command so that we in the next strip 
uh, can use it again and simply by calling read RDS and then we can just simply import the tuned parameters. See you in the next video.